This is not a test Don't expect to be impressed Put on your life vest Sit down your armrest It's time to stray from the grind Don't take my hand cause you'll find No peace of mind Hey there, Aiden Deviants, Junior Adventures and Friends. Welcome back to another side quest, the podcast between the sh- between the main games. Today, we have a very special, special event, but I will not be Gibby for the rest of this time. You remember me as MK Gibson, but today I will be Wank Spankerman, host of the Great Gibivia Challenge. Welcome back to part two of the Great Gibivia Challenge. I am your host, as I said, Wank Spankerman. Yes, the Wank Spankerman. Oh. Yes, yes, we... Uh, we monetized masturbation, turned it into crypto coins. Now we're just into good old-fashioned shit. Every time you poop, we get paid. Yes, hold your applause. Thank you all, Wanks Bankerman. I'm rich and you are not. So, first of all, let us introduce our contestants. Starting at the top, Miss Massey, tell us about yourself. Hi, I am Misty Massey. I'm the author of the Mad Kestrel series of Pirate Fantasy Adventures, and I am an editor for Falstaff Books, for Mocha Memoirs Press, and any other press that feels like they want to throw money at me to do this job, I will edit for you too. (laughs) (laughs) Fantastic. I've heard of none of those things. Moving on. Rick (laughs) Gowaltereski. I can't pronounce this last name. I apologize. Fuck you. (laughs) <laughs> oh well fuck you too <laughs> my my name hey everyone my name is rick Walteri. i'm the author of many things including uh the tome of bill series but you know in my spare time what i like to do is i like to strip naked cover myself in fish oil find a puddle flop around in it and pretend i'm a cod i am strangely aroused which i will talk after this show Stephen leslie weatherill tell us about yourself well, hi there, Mr. Spankerman. My name's Steve Weverell, and uh, I write books such as the Brandon Flymaster series of written down adventures that you can read. You can download them on the internet. And in my spare time, bizarrely, I like to do exactly what Rick does. I knew there was a reason we got along. I have a question. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Did, did Mr. Gualtieri say that he likes to pretend he is a cod or a god? I, a I heard fish. Of- Oh, Why not a cod god? A fish god, I believe. <laughs> Very nice. He's flopping around naked in a puddle going, I am Neptune, king of the sea. <laughs> this is very bizarre. I don't understand. All right. Now, welcome back to part two of the Great Gibivia Challenge. Our previous uh, winner, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bevan, uh, told me to politely go fuck myself. He has better things to do than play with this. So we'll bring him back at a later time for a tournament of champions. So here are the rounds of Gibivia. There are three rounds. Each The first two rounds have four categories, three questions each. Easy, medium, and hard. You gain or lose points according to your final answers. Uh, Mr. Walteri has agreed graciously to be our scorekeeper. Hopefully he doesn't tell me to go fuck myself too many times. All right. For rounds one and two, each of you has a counter spell. So if you get a question wrong, you can counter spell it and not lose points. If someone else gets a question right, you can counter spell that and make them not get their points. We're tracking so far, but you only get one per round. The final round, it's a, it's not really a surprise. People who've seen the last one know exactly what's going to happen. It's pretty much the same thing, but we'll get to that. Is everybody ready to play Gibivia? Yeah, let's no. do it. <laughs> All right. Yep. Uh, the order I picked is the order you appear on my screen. So Misty first, Rick, and then Steve. We will reverse it first in the second round. Moving on. Here are our round one questions. Children's literature, food and cuisine, Edgar Allan Poe, and same name. Same name is one of those tricky ones where it gives you a clue that someone's got a part of a name. You're going to be the full name using. You'll see as it goes on. So, Misty Massey, you're up first. What do you choose? Well, since I actually have an anthology of Edgar Allan Poe-inspired stories coming out later this spring, I'm going to go with Edgar Allan Poe for 300. Uh, can we please censor her? We, no time we said plug your shit. You got an option at the beginning? You, no, you no? didn't say. All right. <laughs> I was talking to my judges. They told me to just mind my own business and host the show. So Edgar Allan Poe for how much? Three. You said for three. All right. 300. Big yeah. spender. Edgar Allan Poe was court-martialed as a cadet at what school? I'm pretty sure that was West Point. 
Is Why that your final answer? That is my final answer. The answer is yes. West Point, congratulations. No, not congratulations. Counterspell. <laughs> <laughs> no one leaves the mud, Misty. <laughs> All right. You're in the mud. So you did not get the answer wrong, so you do not lose 300 points, but you do not gain 300 points. So I believe that was Edgar Allan Poe. I marked Stupid it off there. Stupid there fish god. Uh, the, the fish god has struck again. What did you get for, for questioning Neptune? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Rick, it is your turn. Fish god. Well, considering we're talking about that, let's do food and cuisine for 200. Food and cuisine for 200. What confection was originally called fairy floss? Ah, oh, it's an easy one. Cotton candy. Is that your final answer? Final answer. It is indeed cotton candy. Uh, I'd like to call bullshit on that. Gibby is still <laughs> called fairy floss, where it was invented. <laughs> I thought you were going to counterspell that. All right, never no, mind. No, no, just <laughs> can I counterspell you? Can I do that? <laughs> Wank, Mr. Oh, bring it on, you fake Englishman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Steve, it is your turn. What would you like? Uh, I'm intrigued by same name. Let's go for that for 300. For, go, go right to the hard one. Not even yeah. going to try it. All right. All I'm right. Here th- for, to entertain people. Wank All right. And dragons. Oh. We always go straight for the hard one. <laughs> go straight for the hard, for the hard stuff. Fails All spectacularly. Right. That's the ticket to success. For 300 points, the actors behind Dr. Grant to Jurassic Park and Dr. Horrible. Oh, oh, Sam Neill. And. Now say it all together. <laughs> so the actors behind Sam Neill and Dr. Ho- Horrible. Right. What? Explain this fucking You've got, it's, it's, uh, We're looking for one answer. Like, it'd be like, uh, 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 for example, uh, I, an animal that lives in the woods that is feline and a famous actor from Police Academy, Bobcat Goldthwait. Do you see how this works together? You know, all, all of them together? Oh, I see. Then I'd have to know the name of the person from Dr. Horrible. You I would. Don't. He's a famous actor, you know. I know. I can picture his, his face, his adorable, impish face. I know exactly who this is, but I, <laughs> my brain mm. is blanking. <laughs> What's his name? Yes, we have all day. By all means, take your time. This is a long podcast, man. I'm going to stretch this out. It gives me less to edit later on. Nope, can't get it. Sam Neill, uh, Sam Neill Stevenson. Sam Neill Stevenson. Is that your final answer? Yeah. Sam Neill Patrick Harris. That's what we were looking for. Sam Neill Patrick Harris. Well, Neill Patrick Harris. Again, now that you've said the answer... I feel like I could have got that right. <laughs> well, if you had started with the easy one in the beginning one, it would have made more sense. But, you know, you do you. Go right no, for the hard stuff. Am I not? Oh, we're, right. We're jumping sharks today. Back to the Wankerson. top. Miss Masty. <laughs> uh, let's, do, um, let's do children's lit for 300. Children's lit for 300. Which redheaded character's middle names are Delicatesca, Widow's Shade, Macklemrit, Ephraim's Daughter? She sounds fucking pretentious, whoever she is. I know I know this one, uh, strangely enough. <laughs> famous redheaded... Uh, famous redheaded uh, oh, protagonist. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I really hate this character. <laughs> I saw I, the movie I, when I was a kid, and it just it annoyed me to no end. Cause, hmm, um, I don't even know I, who this character is. Scandinavian, because Scandinavians are weird. But um, <laughs> it's got to be Pippi. Pippi Longstocking. Final answer. Yes. Pippi fucking Longstocking is yeah. the correct answer. You have oh. 300 points. That's Yay. definitely not one of the middle names there, Wankerson. <laughs> They're written out. <laughs> <laughs> it's Spank Wankerman. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mr. Rick G. You so done. Ah. Uh, let's go same name for 200. Same name for 200. The man who wields Excalibur meets a weary interstellar hitchhiker. Mm-hmm. That would probably be King Arthur Dent. Final answer. Yes. King Arthur Dent is correct. Well done. Didn't Arthur have a second name? <laughs> uh, I think King Arthur Pender. I mean, that, that makes no sense then. No, it doesn't. 
I'm just no, that's, that's combining what I'm it together. Saying, Rick. <laughs> Go I'm with the flow, you dumb, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm just saying it's a, it a very poorly constructed question. I don't know. Tell us more about how you power sanded your modem into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of poorly constructed, <laughs> Mr. Last Place, it's your turn. Okay, let's go for food and cuisine for 200 points. A thousand we already did 200 points. Oh, 300 we have points one and there. three. 300 just... points. All right. A traditional one of what contains yellow mustard, pork, ham, Swiss, Swiss cheese, and pickles? A traditional yum, yum. one of what? It's a, it's a, it's a food item. I will have the blank food item, and this traditional food item contains these ingredients. I mean, I just call it a sandwich. I'll give you... It is a sandwich. <laughs> You're half right. But what kind? <laughs> yes, what kind of sandwich? I'm going to go on a limb and say Dude, it's a pork ham, Swiss cheese, and pickle sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> this is why no one likes you. <laughs> this is why delicatessen workers don't like me. Actually, no, they do, because I'm very clear about what I want in my sandwich. Maybe if you gave them a concise name, they would have the answer for you. No, because then there's room for misinterpretation, Wankerson. Whereas if I just mm -hmm. list what I want in the sandwich, everyone goes home happy. So there is mm -hmm. a special name for this type of sandwich, is what you're telling me. Yes, there is a special name um, for this kind of sandwich, yes. It's probably, my family loves these. It's probably an American. Is it... Machine Gun Eagle Sandwich. Machine Gun Eagle Sandwich. <laughs> That's very American. <laughs> that is an American name. Uh, Cuban. So, Cuban so close. Village. So close. Machete oh, wow. kill cocaine. That would have been a better. You, 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 were, you were one country away. <laughs> exactly. I guarantee that uh, sandwich isn't actually Cuban. <laughs> Somebody's made up in America <laughs> and called it a Cuban. <laughs> uh, you're probably right. We are a horrible lot. Uh, Misty Massey, you are next. Oh golly! Um, uh, let's let's go back to uh, Edgar Allen for mm -hmm. uh, two hundred. Two hundred for Edgar Allen. Yes. What story features siblings Roderick and Madeline? Ah, uh, one of my favorites. That would be the fall of the House of Usher. That is correct. Yay! Except it isn't because Counterspell. Boom! Ah, oh, take your points away. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to. I am it, never right making. I just want to play along. I feel. <laughs> I feel you. M Misty is going to get us back, <laughs> and it's going to be ugly. <laughs> I'm just never making you cookies ever again. <laughs> all right, Rick, it is your turn. We have all the 100s left, and one children's lit for 200. I'll do food and cuisine for 100. Food and cuisine for 100. In 1893, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that what food was, in fact, a vegetable? Beef. <laughs> oh, God. I think I know this How one. is this the 100 point one? Uh, because you're overthinking it. What, what often gets confused for not being a vegetable, which is pretty much a vegetable? I'll say, I'll say a tomato. <laughs> and I will say, you are correct. It is actually a berry. Because uh, I was about to say, it's actually not a nut. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they said, fine, you bitches. You can have it. It's a tomato. It's a vegetable, even though it's not. There you go. Democracy uh, works. You, you have to think that today's Supreme Court must look back on those cases and go, why can't we just have to argue about tomatoes? <laughs> <That's what it laughs> <is. Yeah. laughs> we hadn't invented enough rights for people to argue about. <laughs> 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 yeah, they they take away our right to argue about tomatoes. <laughs> Deal with these healthcare issues instead, you. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Weverell. All right, uh, let's go for children's lit, whichever one hasn't been selected yet. You have one and two. Uh, one then. Let's go for the one. The loser category. All right. Which series pioneered turning books into games and using the second-person perspective when writing? Oh, second person. Choose your own adventure. Um. Correct. Choose your own adventure. Oh, excellent. I'm now at minus a million points or whatever it was. Minus 500. Okay. 
It may as well be a million, Rick. I'm not coming back from this. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> Misty, it is your turn. Uh, what is left? Children's lit for two. Uh, <laughs> it's the opposite of right. Bing. 100 points for Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe for one and same name for one. Um, I'll take Edgar Allan Poe for one. Okay. No one can, no one can stop you from getting this one. So. Oh, man. They can't. So I'll probably get it wrong. Which, which Poe <laughs> short story is considered the first modern detective story? Ah, th- there is a story in that anthology that I'm not allowed to promote uh, that is based mm-hmm. on this story. It's called The Murders in the Rue Morgue. The Murders in the Rue Morgue, indeed. Congratulations. You finally Woo-hoo! got a Poe question right, officially. <laughs> For someone who has an anthology, <laughs> apparently. But yeah, this is your first time getting an actual question right. I don't know what. To- I got all oh. three. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. You only got points for one. Yeah, right? the points I can't- don't reflect that, Misty. I- Thank you, Stephen. We agree on something for once. <laughs> all right. I will stab uh, Mr. all of you. <laughs> Would you care for Children's Lit 2 or Same Name for One? Let's go Same Name for One. Same Name for One. All right. For 100 points. Nintendo anthropomorphic pilot meets half of the duo from the X-Files. Ah, see, that's a fun one. Okay. Um, anthropomorphic. Although I don't know how this works. Again, I think this is a poorly structured one. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, my, 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 my brain wants to go to, like, you know, Ratchet and Clank or something, but... Uh, I know that... I know... Yeah, the only thing I Do can a barrel roll! Is, the only Do thing a I barrel think, roll! The only thing I can think of is... Star Fox Mulder. Mother of God, even a broken clock is right twice a day. Well, <laughs> Wangerson, Fox, Fox also <laughs> has a, uh, a second name. So this again. You have to work. play within the spirit. I tried to give you Bobcat. His, his as name is to... Star Fox. He's got like a real name. No, it is Star Fox. It's just Star Fox. Do a barrel roll. My God, have you not played the game? <laughs> and I'm counterspelling. Because oh, we're oh, almost so out, and there's only one question left. I have to use it. So, all right. So, uh, Rick, take your hundred points away. <laughs> all right. Which leaves children's literature for Mr. Weverall. Are you ready, sir? Let's do it. Humorous David Barry co-wrote prequels to what classic novel? Well, hmm, if only I knew who humorous Dave Barry was. Mm. I read one Dave Barry book. People said it was funny. And they were wrong. I'm going to say um, Lord of the Rings. Negative. Uh, it was, in fact, Peter Pan. Oh, right. Okay, well, I, I care even less about that now. Sorry, Dave oh, Barry. Right. <laughs> what the fuck's a prequel to Peter Pan? What's it? So, some some kid in, like, you know, in a bassinet? <laughs> well, maybe it's the beginning of Captain Hook or Tinkerbell's, like, orgy adventure. I don't know. I didn't read the book. But I tell you what, I would read that. I'm not going to lie. I've read both of those, Wankerson, and they're not by <laughs> Dave Barry, so... <laughs> I honest, I was way off. I honestly thought it was going to be Captain Underpants, considering Dave Barry's level of humor. So, <laughs> end of round one. What are the scores, Mister Rick? Well, Rick for five hundred. All right, Misty for four hundred. Although oh. she would have been killing us if the rest of us weren't assholes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and Steve at negative seven hundred. Negative wow. seven hundred. All right. <laughs> so, how are we feeling? <laughs> That's about how I usually feel. Around round one. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, right. Drunk and surly. Yeah. Drunk, confused, a little bit annoyed with some of the poor question phrasing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did you put in time to do this? No, just me. So fuck yourself. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I, I sacrificed part of my time in life and ignored my child's upbringing to like bring you joy. But yes, let's shit on that work. That's good. You know, while you power grind your internet into the oblivion. Father, I'm hungry. I'm doing trivia, you little. <laughs> right, right, I'm doing scallion. trivia for things I don't even get paid for. So go fuck yourself. All right. Let's move on to round two. <laughs> where the points are doubled <laughs> now in opposite order because fuck it uh steve minus 700 you are up first oh wow i don't actually know a lot about booze probably because of all the brain damage i've done to myself through drinking but let's go for right. booze for 800 booze for 800 mezcal does not contain a worm but rather what dead creature <sighs> Hmm. 
Interesting. I didn't know there was another alcohol mm-hmm. that contained a dead animal that I will avoid because that's never been an attraction to me. Uh, yeah. Probably not a mouse. You know, that sounds more like a factory error. <laughs> but, um, very, very true. We do it all the time in the Wake and Family Fortune yeah. when we bottle our uh, yeah. dead animals. It's probably still an insect. Uh, You're not wrong. Keep going. I feel bad for you at this point. <laughs> you You're like the slow kid in class. I just want to see you win. <laughs> All right, a millipede. A millipede, is that your final answer? Yeah, sure. A moth larva. A larva. Oh. Well, my one's cooler. I was going to go for wasp, which kind of looks like a moth larva. Ew. <laughs> White Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Yes, we all had the cannibalistic drinks. I'm okay with this. All right. Rick, you are up, sir. Let's do Princess Bride for 400. Princess Bride for 400. What is Miracle Max's wife's name? Mr. Uh, Mrs. Max. <laughs> I think they actually ever say it in the movie. You never had a so good insert name here? No, they does. I remember I remember very, very clearly. Natovich, I'm your wife. Would you like a hint, Which? Mr. Rick? Which? <laughs> Would you like a hint? Which? <laughs> well, see how well you know me. It's my wife's name. Which? I thought it's not. All right, yes. <laughs> the answer is Valerie. Her name. Oh. You never had a good so Valerie? He says it very clearly. Uh, oh. I had Melody in my head, but you know, I Oh, I, I recall that line, but I heard him. I, I, I never heard him say a, a name. It's always, you never had it so good. <laughs> you bitch. Oh, right. <laughs> Damn it, Carol Kane. You should have had a more pronounced name. All right. God, she's amazing. Uh, Misty, you are up. Uh, let's go um, Indiana Jones for two. Indiana Jones for 200. Yes. Indy has a crippling fear of what animal? Oh, easy peasy. That would be snaky babies. It is indeed snaky babies. Snaky babies. Yay! Does anybody want to take her points away? Or are you waiting for uh, the big well, She didn't say snake. She said snaky babies. So I don't think she should get it anyway. I'm not wasting a I counter did spell. Say, I said I, snaky babies, norm, snakes. Normally I would agree with you, but you've uh, you've used my last name incorrectly for many times and insulted me, so she gets the points. <laughs> well, try try getting right. away with that on, uh, on Jeopardy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will punch Mr. Trebek's dead corpse into the ground. I hate that man. All right. <laughs> Back to the bottom. Steven. Okay. I'm pretty confident with my Indiana Jones knowledge up until the film started to suck. So I'm going to take Indiana Jones for 800. All right. Crystal skull. Crystal. <laughs> Indiana's iconic whip is made from what material? Magic, I imagine. <laughs> uh, I would say leather. Do I have to be more specific? Is there some sort of. Please be more specific. Oh. Magic leather. Don't kid around, Joey. You need to be more specific about the kind of leather. Kangaroo leather? Holy shit! Yes, kangaroo hide is in fact the answer. <laughs> oh, come on. I, ne- I needed some charity, clearly. <laughs> you I'm did. Not even, I'm not even going to try to take that away. because I, I think he's still minus 100. That. It doesn't matter. So well, yeah, that too. <laughs> All right, Rick, you are up. Let's try comedy movies for 400. Comedy movies for 400. Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Hall, 1988. Coming to America. Coming to America. Correct, oh, sir. Nice one. Misty, you are up. Oh, um, there's only three of you this time. It goes faster. Just more is, questions. That's true. Um, let's do Princess Bride for. Is 800 available? 800 is available, yes. Okay, let's. Princess Bride, 800. Who wrote the book, um, The Princess Bride? That would be William Goldman. Of Goldman Sachs fame. I don't know. I just made that up. Yes, it is in fact William Goldman. Counterspell! <laughs> yeah, I knew that shit was coming. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rick, I thought about doing it. Then I thought, no, that would be monstrously cruel. 
<laughs> I'm glad to see like Rick was the first one to jump in. The previous way ran Gavivia won. No one wanted to counterspell each other or they would counterspell no. themselves and would lose points. No, Rick's full on fuck you. And I appreciate that in a player. <laughs> to the surprise of no one who listens to this podcast at all. <laughs> Torag will smite your answers. <laughs> right, Stephen, it's your turn, sir. Okay, I'll. Uh, that booze question was quite interesting. Let's take booze for 400. Let's learn something today. A Moscow mule is traditionally served in a mug made from what metal? Copper. Does he make a proper copper? Yes, it is. Copper is, in fact, the answer. Mm. All right. Do you like a Moscow mule? I do not. They are an abortion to all of uh, alcohol. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Strong opinions. <laughs> Rick, you're up. <laughs> Accurate ones. All right, Rick, you're up. I like Zima. Ah. Uh. Ah, fuck it. We'll, we'll, we'll go for something big. Comedy movies for 800. Comedy movies for 800. Oh, you aced the last one. Brittany, for eight, Brittany Murphy, Paul Rudd, 1995. I know this one. Paul Rudd. I don't know anything. That Brittany Murphy, Paul Rudd's been in every movie. Uh, <laughs> I know. Men's a vampire. I'll say Clueless. Yes, it nice is one, deep. Rick. Count the spell. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> I wasn't going to give you Alicia Silverstone on that one. Too easy. No, the yep. late, the late great Brittany Murphy and Paul Rudd. Ah, Steve, are question. you doing it or me? No, I already, I already used called mine. it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then I'm counterspelling. <laughs> just double counterspell, Rick. Can we do that? Can we just banish Rick if we yeah, combine our powers? <laughs> <laughs> Who used this? Does Steve, you use yours, correct? I use my one. Misty, you still got okay. one in the chamber. Okay. All right. Uh, Misty, it is your turn. Oh, um, uh, what's left in Indiana Jones? Uh, 400 points. Let's do that. All right. In what country does Raiders of the Lost Ark begin? Oh, golly. Um, Stuff. Brazil? Is that your final answer? Yeah. You are wrong. Peru. Peru. I was the close. Peruvian jungle. It, well, they, yes, they are both in South America. That is true. Uh, <laughs> count the spell not to lose the points, Misty. And I'm, yeah, you, I'm going to, yes. <laughs> all right. All right. There are three questions left. We have booze for one, The Princess Bride for two, and comedy movies for two. Let's take another booze one. All right. I'm sensing a trend with you, sir. All right. Ah, it's Sunday. Ending a 300-year-old tradition in 1970, British sailors were no longer given a daily ration of what? Uh, rum. Rum is indeed the answer. And everything went to shits from there. <laughs> <laughs> very, very true. Rick, Princess Bride or comedy movies? Let's do Princess Bride. All right. After Wesley is lost at sea, who is blamed for his death? Dread Pirate Roberts. <laughs> Very true. Yes, it is in fact the Dread Pirate Roberts. I'm just going to say, I really need a prequel to The Princess Bride. Or I, or a side movie. I want to see just Wesley at sea for those five years becoming the new Dread Pirate Roberts. I want to you see know, that movie. It would be great if it was an R-rated movie and it just showed him murdering the shit out of people. <laughs> it's just a, it's a horrible <laughs> fucking harrowing yeah. movie. He's like, now apprentice, I'm going to show you how to gut someone. It's like, just remember, no survivors. <laughs> this is called keel hauling. It's so much fun. All right. I always Let's wanted see. the sequel that would have been Inigo Montoya becoming the Dread Pirate Roberts. That would have been the party ship of the decade, right? Well, you can actually, we could actually combine those ideas in a, uh, a Godfather 2 style that shows the past yeah. and the current side mm. by side, right? Still definitely <laughs> are right. Oh, hands down. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we did get that sequel. It's called Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> you son of a bitch! You know how I feel about those movies. All right, Misty, you get comedy movies. Gene Wilder, Cleavon Little, 1974, a goddamn classic. Oh, absolutely a goddamn classic. That would be Blazing Saddles. It would indeed be Blazing Saddles. Congratulations! Ooh. Ooh. I love that movie. All right, how do the scores stand, Mister Rick? All right, stands Rick at 700, Misty at 800, and Steve catching up at negative 100. Oh, negative 100. I'm nearly at zero. Nice. But not quite. <laughs> All right, so, uh, uh, Rick, you, you said Misty has how many points? 800. 800, you have 700. So Misty is yep. first, you are second, and Steve is third. Steve, 
like last time, in order to play into the final round, you must promise the uh, the A and Deviants Junior Adventures and Friends over on our Discord something to give you points to put you at to tie you at points with the, the next place up, which will be seven hundred points. So, what are you going to do er, to to earn eight hundred points? Mm. You've got to do something. Last time it was like several jokes; none of them were good, but you did <laughs> All jokes. Of them were original. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I promised yeah. original jokes that I had made up uh, that had never been heard before, and I delivered. That's what. Mm-hmm. So that, 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 that's what that word vomit was. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> it's in a very similar situation, coming in at negative points. But I want everybody to play, so I'll bump you up. But mm. you've got to, uh, you got to sing for your supper. So oh. what are you going? I know from experience that dick pics are only worth two hundred points. Actually, speaking of <laughs> sing for your supper, would you record yourself singing for at least sixty seconds of a of a couple of a cover song and post it onto the A and D Discord? Would you do that? Yeah, okay, let's do that. That'll make people suffer. Fuck you, revenge. Yes. Is mine. <laughs> All right. I, I like uh, perhaps a Taylor Swift cover or something. Uh, Give equally- us points for that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come up with a song, but yes, you will see. You will you will record yourself singing and playing and doing all kinds of shenanigans. All right, all right. Now, when we move into this round with uh, Misty coming in first place, Steve, you are in last. So I want you to choose out of these four categories. You choose Misty's category. Oh, Misty looks like she'd rock all of these categories. From my side quest experience of mix uh, with Misty, she's shown proficiency in at least three of these that I'm aware of. <laughs> uh, I have to go for human anatomy. All right, Misty, you get human anatomy. Oh God! All right, uh, Rick, you are in next place. Please choose Steve's category. I'm going to say Weird Al. Okay, Steve gets Weird Al. And Misty, you have two categories to choose from to give to Rick. I'm going to stick Rick with Greek mythology. All right. So the top scorer right now is Misty, who gets human anatomy. For the, no one chose, no one chose '90s video games. Let's see what that was, just to see what happens. Uh, it was a trap. <laughs> Lucasfilm <laughs> created what 1998 game based off the Land of the Dead? Does anybody know this? No. Oh, that would be shit. It would not be shit, no. No, it was, uh, what was it called? Dead. That's the what, point of the what, question. I asked you a question, you give me the answer. That's the whole trivia. Mm-hmm. I remember the In game. In 1998, Lucasfilm video game. Uh, no. I, I think Actually, I think the one I'm thinking of is about five years later. Grim Fandango. The game yeah. was Grim Fandango. Yeah, oh, I don't think that. You All right, so. Misty, you get human anatomy. I'm how much of your about this. <laughs> of your of your eight hundred points? How much are you willing to wager? Oh, bet it all, Wankerson. If this leads to one of my dick pics, it's no, not funny. It's not humans. clever. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a huge like human resource issue. What <laughs> is another name nice. of Ceremon? <laughs> uh, so I'm thinking. <laughs> Isn't that the guy, think, the guy who like owned Isengard? Yes, well, and he fought the hobbits. The white wizard. I can't even. You're trying to look at the root origins, aren't you? <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> Probably so, like one of the weird goblin things that killed the Hampshire, but I could be wrong. And that's that's part of human anatomy. <laughs> yes, possibly. <laughs> Because I got it from the human anatomy section of the trivia games I pulled this shit from. So, yes. No, no. Steve said it was goblin things. And I'm like, oh, well, goblins yes. inside me? Okay. <laughs> that yeah. would explain a lot. But I have a very old-fashioned um, approach to human anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> the four humors and the goblins inside of our systems and, you know, yes. um, leeches. Um, let's see. Uh, what do you call it? The The... The liquid inside the brain that keeps your brain from bumping around, and what the hell is it called? I, I am. I, I swear to God, I'm a writer. I know how to use words, but not. I know how to Google them. Talking to me, <laughs> yeah, right. I should. I should have. Yeah, I. I can't remember. All right, so to lose all your points, which is going to happen no matter what, but all four of us are in danger of this right now because we're all wearing earphones. It is earwax. It is the fancy word for earwax. Wow. Wow. 
That I have fun. never wow. seen that word. So I've we, learned something today. That's right. I did too. When I, when I like, like, oh, the, I came across uh, that. Jean-Paul Gaultier version of AOX. <laughs> yes. Zero man. Zero woman. <laughs> See, now I would believe that there are little I unlocked my serum in when I turned 13. Yes. <laughs> I would believe there are little goblin things running around in my ears. So. All right. I have, okay. a, I have a worm tongue whispering in my serum. In. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rick. For Of your 700 points, how much do you wish to wager? Because now you and Rick, you and Steve are both tied for 700. Misty is currently in last place with zero. Oh, oh we're both tied for 700? Well, because he got to, he got, he's going to sing a song for the court that's to get to the next po- point total, which was that's you. That's why I have 700. Yes. Then I will bet 699. 699. All right. So, and you got what again? Greek mythology? Yep. Yes. Greek mythology. Also a part of the brain, what creature is part horse and part fish? Damn. I know that one. Yeah, I know that too. Uh, no, don't, don't. don't look around. Look, <laughs> no, no, look no, at me. No, no. Look at me. Look right here. <laughs> right here, buddy. What the fuck is this called? Earwax. <laughs> Earwax. Cinnamon. <laughs> I, I, I want. I want to say kelpies because that's what they are. But yeah, I'm going to say kelpie. Fuck it. Maybe there's a part of the brain called kelpie. There is not, sir. So <laughs> the hippocampus. <laughs> the hippocampus. Ah, the hippocampus. Right, yeah. Man, all right. Wild. <laughs> all right. So you have one point. You are down to one point. Steve, don't bet anything. <laughs> you <Yeah>. win. <laughs> I know, Gib, uh, but that would be dishonorable. So I'm going to bet a lot. Uh, just for the record, I would have done that. <laughs> 698. 690. So if you win, by, by a point. How about that? <laughs> oh, no, right. we're um, betting everything on my knowledge of Weird Hell Yankovic, which all right. fair, is not. I love it. I, very go yet. big or go home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, betting it all on Weird Al Yankovic, the question is, what was Weird Al's first recorded song? Mm, I don't know this. It's all some kind of polka number. It was a parody. I will give you this. It is a parody song. Because, and I've seen his like autobiography movie, which wasn't really helpful because there was a lot of shit in that that definitely didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Um, ah, you know what? I can't tell you. I'm just going to go for fat. I'm going to go with that. That's way later. I mean, for God's sake, my surgeon came for fat. I don't even remember. know what the fuck you're doing. Dun, 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 dun. dun. My bologna. Ah. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Yeah. That was when he was still um, showing up on Dr. Demento. Doc, show, Dr. Right? Demento, correct. Yeah. So the winner is Rick with one point. That's Great. it. Just one fucking point. <laughs> well done. Well done. That turned out Ladies to be a lot closer and better. than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> For one point. I, I, well, that means you are now in the Hall of Fame next to Robert Bevan. That is how good we are. Two bold white men who don't know shit and somehow <laughs> luck their way into victory. I am so thankful. This has been Wank Spankerman. Yeah, hold your applause, I know. Reminding that your people are a blight on this planet. Let your pets fuck, spay, and neuter your children. Good night, everybody. But no, we can all excited. I just sit on and talk and have fun for comments if you like. Follow the game show and talk to our fans and our friends. Now, 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 I, get, now I gotta have a su- su- sudden death with Bevan. You do. <laughs> sudden death with Bevan. That should be a <sighs> Patreon tier. Mm. <laughs> uh, I thought that quite well. Quite well. I, I learned some things there. I, yeah. a lot about, uh, I did too. I'm, I'm going to listen much closer next time I, listen, I watch Princess Bride. Yeah, so what you're suggesting is that the winners of the last two rounds head off in some kind of. Uh, well, I think I need to run a death. third. I think I need to run a third. Yeah. So uh, three. And then and then I'll have the three people that like be the ultimate Gabivia challenge winner. Yeah. Yeah. Am I right to turn up and lose in the third one as well? Is that. Yes, yes. Pe- that, but people, Rick cannot play in the next one. Yes. Yeah. I think people expect it at this point. I don't, I don't, I don't want to lose to Bob. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, like, I don't, but it happened. Did you uh, did you watch that episode or like listen back on it by any chance on that side quest? A, a, few, a few parts of it. Like I, I I get this impression of like of Bob, who's somebody like we all think he doesn't watch any movies, doesn't watch any TV show. Everything sucks. Everything's stupid. He somehow knows everything. <laughs> no, it, it was it was just it was one of those, we got into the final thing questions and. I think his question was like, "What's the difference?" Like in World War One, there were male and female tanks. What's the difference? Yeah, and it was something to the effect of like, like he got it. He accidentally guessed partially right, and uh, 
I was like, well, I just need a little more clarification. He's like, the male tanks have bigger guns and the women's got smaller guns. And I asked the audience, because that's basically what, like, the males have the big cannons and the girls have the machine <laughs> guns. And they're like, the, the other contestant goes, I think he's right. So they gave it to him. And that's how he ended up winning. So <laughs> Male tanks got bigger dicks. Yeah. I believe that's how it was basically, raised. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a gun. That's a tank dick. <laughs> that's a tank dick. <laughs> But no, I like I, I. As long as you guys are having fun doing this, I have zero problem making this. It's it literally it only takes like you know like an hour or two of my time to like just pull up the stuff and just put it all into the uh, you know, Google I'm slides. Just gonna, I'm just going to ask. So so why why don't why don't we call like you know like like whole battles during World War II tank cocky tank cocky? <laughs> Perhaps some of them did. We'll never know because in the old days they used to be ashamed of such forts, and these days we just splurt them onto the fucking internet. It might have been in Rommel's book, Tankaki, like chapter four of Tank Warfare, you know. Tankaki. I mean, in all, in all fairness, like, you know, you get boo cocky, you can talk about it afterwards. You get tank cocky, not so much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Boom cocky. I'm uh, thinking oh, if, nice. <laughs> if Japan had had the tanks instead of the airplanes and ships, maybe we would have, maybe it would have happened. But since the Germans. Yeah, because they can't it. drive those. The, Pearl Harbor <laughs> would have happened. All the tanks are just sinking. We can't figure this out. You know, <laughs> <laughs> holy shit. I don't understand what, what they're doing. They're just driving these tanks on this aircraft carrier. <laughs> We're on the way. We're driving across China. We'll be there eventually. <laughs> 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 I slowed things down, but yeah, they didn't make the sacrifice for a more phallic and disturbing war, so that's on them. I don't know. I I, I learned something that day. I, I think I've learned a few things today. That on the day oh, okay. of Bevan's ascension to champion. Oh right, yeah, that was a that was a good day. The yeah. least media savvy person on the entire podcast. <laughs> that was a strange game. Yeah. <laughs> well, also, like, you know, you guys did a good job of just stopping Misty because it's like she actually knows stuff and yeah. she, like, lives where she's yeah. like, knows her trip. Like, no, you're not getting that right. No, you're not getting that right. <laughs> yeah, she's always, she's going for the high scoring ones and it's like, whoa. <laughs> well, also, in the last game, I actually had things like, you know, like uh, moments of women's history, like who was the first female Surgeon General, something like that. And every one of the cast members looked at me like I was a fucking asshole. They're like, this is supposed to be comedy and dick <laughs> jokes. Don't ask me something How am I real. supposed to make fun of that. <laughs> <laughs> I already get enough shit for making fun of, fun of Ghostbusters 2016, and that was shit. You're going to yeah, make fun of shit. the first female Surgeon General. You're sending me down a dark path, Gibby. <laughs> <laughs> the internet does not like you, sir, for some reason. I can't figure out why. But no, both Misty and Emily look at me like, I don't even fucking know that. <laughs> so. Well, then you had to look at me like, oh, you're a woman. How do you not know your own history? <laughs> the side down. Well, I can't predict who's going to be on. I can't like Taylor, like uh, British slang for Steve, and you know Transformers for Rick, and you know I can't, I can't like you know, yeah. you know pirate themed adventures for Misty. I can't like necessarily like predict who's going to be on. So like, I just got to kind of kind of go little nerdy, little science, little general, just all encompassing. Yeah, and also yeah. your uh, your fairy philosophy today shows you have no appreciation for British. You call it slang. I call it having the correct name for things that we made up. <laughs> <laughs> you still call it fairy floss? Uh, yeah. Or candy it? floss, right? Yeah, I think my grandma called it fairy floss. I don't think we do anymore. I think we've been Americanized on that. Probably. Well, that sounds like a you. Pro- it sounds like we influenced you, you son of a bitch. And I love it. Mm-hmm. So take that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, there's probably, I'm talking about my area. There's probably other areas where they still call it the correct name and have not been touched by your constant and overarching yeah, I hope there's areas where if you dare call it cotton candy, somebody just reaches across and punches you in the face. I like I the so. idea that like, it's kind of like the lost tribes of England. Like there, there's like never been touched by an outside force. They're, they're still just these Celts and yeah. woads and like, I'm from the like, Midlands. We yeah, drink mead with our fairy floss. <laughs> you sons of bitches. I think there's a few of those still in Wales. <laughs> mm. Uh, yeah, no, no. not to I was actually a little out nervous. Potential Welsh listeners, all two of you. <laughs> oh no, I loved, I loved Wales. Wales was amazing, and the people were wonderful. And and uh, we had a taxi driver who thought we were just completely exotic because we had southern accents. 
or did it have nine C's in your name or C H H H H H H C C H H H Smith? You know, no, Wells, no, no, go fuck yourself, Wales. Just get some, get your shit right. Angry dude in Glasgow who's like listening to us, just like you know. Now I got to kill them all. <laughs> it was actually King Arthur was one of ours. It was called Caliburn, and I will kill this this uh, imperial. Dick, you know, like or whatever. It's, yeah, <laughs> I was a, I was a little, I was kind of wondering though. if you were going to be super timely and throw in a, a Dune category. I was uh, no, all no. ready for that, but no, I saw I saw Dune too, and I don't want to talk about it anymore. That movie just that that broke me. <laughs> <laughs> please, please tell me you sat you sat there watching the entire thing with like one of those sandworm like you know popcorn buckets. No, they thing. didn't offer it. No, no. My I took my son like I my son and I watched it like part one at home because he wanted to see it and like he was blown away. He was really into it. Then we went to the theater the next day like on Saturday opening weekend. And we went and saw it together. And at the end of the movie, we're driving back. I'm like, so what'd you think? He's like, why was it so not as good as the first? <laughs> like, he's 12. And I'm like, I felt the same way. I don't want to color your opinion. And it, it was just one of those, like, it was beautiful. It was beautiful with great sound. But at no point was there anything remotely close to tension, stakes, like everything. Paul's like, Paul, like, I got to go do a thing. He does his thing first try with no effort. Like, no, it just does the thing. You know, it, 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 it I never believed that Paul wasn't going to succeed at any point. Like he just, it was just first try. I, I, hmm. I was never really able to get into, into that. Cause like, I remember I tried reading it and my first, my impression was, okay, 10,000 years in the future, humans become boring dipshits. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. look at me, Misty, like, like you want to talk good things about it. Don't you? <laughs> I adore it. No, I, and, and I, I know I people it. that do, and I don't want to take anybody's yum away. I'm not trying to yuck your yeah, yum. It I, just didn't not, work for yeah. me. Okay. Oh, I, I want to take that. Concern, and this is a genuine concern, is I thought that the the sandworm popcorn buckets were like an AI generated joke. Is that an actual I thought they, yeah, thing? They look like giant plastic buttholes. Yeah. Reach into the butthole and get People your People are uh, buying them pop- and putting in and taking food out and then putting it in their yeah. mouths. Okay. Yeah. Right. God, fuck, Some marketing person somewhere. You know something? I guarantee that was probably like a junior intern's idea, and they were like, "There's no way this is going to make it past anything." And then we're like, "God damn, they actually God, did people it!" People do it. People will put anything in their mouth. My God, we're fucked with the species, aren't we? Just fucked. yeah. After 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 Dune two, it made me long for the 1984 David Lynch version. Like, Mm-mm. oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I don't know if it's nostalgia or what, but like, told a whole story in three hours. Man, I'm good. So thank you. Have no, it didn't. We need <laughs> did. more sting in a speedo. Mm-hmm. You know did you would... read the books? I read the first book. I tried to read the uh, other ones, and once it got into like Leto the Second and becoming a, a, a worm, and te- I I realized I just it wasn't sci fi for me at that point because I I liked the first when the first book is kind of an allegory because it is it is a case like where also where's all the outrage on the internet? Where's the people that get mad at Avatar when they call it like mm-hmm. hey the white guy goes to this place and becomes the savior complex because that's Dune all over again? Why, right. why can't people be mad at that instead of calling this thing beautiful? Uh, it it it. I love the allegory because, again, it references like kind of like our wars constantly in the Middle East, whether that's crusades, whether that's oil, whatever. When Herbert wrote it, there's always – there's this constant need to go into this one location to get the one magical MacGuffin. It, it, it's an allegory for the modern times. It's it's a, a retrospective look at the past. Uh, clearly, the Bene Gesserit are a huge influence when Robert Jordan wrote the Aes Sedai and the game and the Wheel of Time. And the Bene Gesserit are my favorite part. Watching their machinations and manipulations are freaking fantastic. My problem, the first movie was really good as it followed in like this beautiful sweeping narrative and it built and it built and it built. But it, this second one built to f- a fizzle, like because it, to me, it built to a fizzle because in the first movie, like the Emperor sent an entire squadron just, just in, with an announcement to say, hey, you got this planet, don't fuck it up. And in the second one, it's him, his daughter, and 13 guys in a disco ball. And like, there's no pageantry. <laughs> and like, and Paul breaks in and goes, okay, everybody, we're going to go into another room so we can have some more dialogue. Okay. Everybody come on, come with me. We're going to go into another room. Okay. So, you know, and then he fights and like the whole, that, this version of fade was like, oh, I lick my knife. I'm so Jared Leto and Slytherin combined. <laughs> eh, I'm so creepy. Some, somebody like, posted a really good, ugh. a really good, like one liner review of it in, in team 12 today. It was something like, uh. Like, you know, the, the entire story are, is horny old white guys un, unable to share a planet made of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> but I can, well. from, a, from, a, from, a, from, a, from an auteur perspective, it is gorgeous. It is sweeping. It is the, the sound of this theater was amazing. Mm-hmm. It just, 
from a narrative focus, I know they were trying to do the story, but it, it felt like they just kept doing these two week time jumps and it, it just, it didn't work for me. It just, it, the narrative choice. Wasn't in this there didn't a plot component of this movie where somebody has to put their hand in a box and they might that's, die if they that's don't in do one. that? <laughs> Okay. Wouldn't that have well, made no, a more sense? They're not going to die. They're not going to die. I was just die. about to say, isn't that Flash Gordon? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Flash Gordon. <laughs> it's most like sci-fi that movies. Is... But wouldn't that have made like a more sensible popcorn bucket? Yeah, it's just the pain Absolutely. box. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> somebody like, said that on the internet yesterday, an and I was like, I would have gone and waited in line for a pain box popcorn bucket. <laughs> and kept, uh, you know, the the sandworm popcorn bucket. Yeah, that's amusing. I don't want one. But well, like, aren't they doing one for like the next Ghostbusters, where it's basically like you know, like a ghost trap popcorn bucket? Like, I don't want to go see that in the theater. But I would go for just for that. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. It's not an anus. It's fine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it did look. Like, they did look like big anuses. Like I, I, like in the David Lynch when they were giant uncircumcised dicks, and then the next one they were just giant buttholes with mouths. And it, it, it I, then the, my one friend laughed. He was not a Dune fan, but he went and saw the movie. He said he was like, "How did they get off?" Because they're going so fast. How do they get an entire like fleet of people on the back one of things? Do the, do the worms kind of just pull over and let everybody disembark? Like that's a good point. They never show that. That's kind of <laughs> bullshit, isn't it? They well, they slow them down by pulling the the segments apart, and it the pulling the segments um, irritates the worm, and they slow down. Right, but notice how they hook it in this movie. The uh-huh. segments are backwards. That's not how natural. That's not how they would evolve. They're, the segments are facing forward. They should be facing back. So they lift the, the segments up, but they're lifting forward with the hooks to turn the worm. But that's not how segments – they would aim the other direction, like scales, so the sand doesn't get in there. I would also like to point out that there are no such things as uh, like mega giant worms. So I thought that was inaccurate. <laughs> hey, don't be dissing Shai <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, I was honest to God. I was sitting in the theater up on the edge of my seat and um, there there's, we were sitting in the front row of our section. And so there was this rail in front of us mm-hmm. and I was up on the rail, you know, and I, 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 and I, I truly do appreciate it. that. I love when people have that kind of like passion for their, yeah. for their fan base. It's like, cause like, it, that's not my space. You know, I tease, I joke, I, I be an asshole for the sake of comedy and critique, but like, I, I know that's not my space. Like it didn't mean right. as much to me as I know it meant to other people. I still found it like kind of boring. Well, the company that makes the fleshlight should make one in the shape of a pumper. <laughs> there we go. That makes more sense. <laughs> I'm still not eating popcorn Ow. out of it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and we live in the movie time of post, uh, uh, Palpatine came back. So yeah. no one cares about yeah. plot anymore, Gibby. No one's writing anything. <sighs> We're just converting that things is, with machines. That is true. That is true. And they're setting up for, they're clearly setting up for the third one for the Holy War. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I wish them well. I don't know if I need to see it. So <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> I, will. I have no taste. My son also wanted to watch Kung Fu Panda. I'm like, God damn, sure, it's a great movie. <laughs> like, <laughs> so Kung Fu Panda is good. <laughs> It is a good movie. I, I, yeah, like we're watching two, so we're done here. We're going to go watch part two here in a little bit. So, <laughs> All right, so that's been about 57 minutes. I think we're good here. So does anybody else have anything you want to add, either trivia-based, sandworm-based, popcorn fuck bucket based anything they want to like get off their chest before we head out? No, I, I had a problem with the whole popcorn bucket thing. I genuinely – Absolutely believed that was something that had been AI generated. Oh, and now you're telling me it's real. It's, it's been a bit of a shock, but uh, no. They didn't have so, them at our theater. Though. Before we go, but I want to make this decision. Rick and Misty, I need give me a song that Steve has to sing. He has to record himself singing to put up on the A and D to pay his penance to get. That's how he got his points to get into the final Gibivia challenge. So, uh, what song does he have to sing? The I whole just thing, or just a piece? Well, I would say no. I would say at least a minute's worth of it. So, um, so like at least the opening thing and get into the refrain. So, some does it be a pop song? Does it got to be a weird Al song? Chasing waterfalls. Ooh, it's not bad, I'll, Misty. I'll go. Welcome to the Black Parade. Mm. <laughs> I'll see if I can mm. combine them somehow. <laughs> that you would do a excellent. mashup of like. All right. All right, Steve, those are your options. <laughs> TLC and My Chemical Romance. <laughs> All right. So within two weeks' time, 
from the time this airs. Well, you've you got, got a time limit. I'm a busy guy. I got stuff on, you know. I got a fucking real job, you know. He's got a motor to replace. You'll get it when you get it, internet. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> And that is the kind of quality you come look for us here over on Authors and Dragons. And, and for our pay, people who pay the Patreon to get on the Discord, this is what your your beloved uh, – uh, I think he's Welsh. I don't they know. know. Your champion, cool. your champion like, like thanks of you. So uh, – <laughs> uh, for Misty Massey, Rick Walteri, and Steve Weatherall, thank you all for coming out for another side quest. It's been a blast. I've been MK Gibson, and tune in next time for whatever the fuck we bring you. So you all take care. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Authors and Dragons is brought to you under a Creative Commons license, meaning you are free to share this material so long as credit is given to those who created it, which is us, the people you just heard play the game. Opening and closing themes performed by the Gore Core 4. Authors and Dragons!